Hey everybody, I'm Mark and you're watching the Garage Guy 879 channel. And what we're looking at right here is my brand new Smith & Wesson model 617-6 chambered in 22LR. Now I've already went out earlier and taken a first shot, so what do you say we watch those video segments? Then we'll be right back with you. All right, here we are at my little shooting area. I've got 10 rounds of the uh, laser 40 grain 22 LR ammo loaded up. 10 rounds, we'll see how she does. My first shots. <sighs> oh yeah. Five single action, no problem. Let's try some double. <laughs> All came out. Not one bit of recoil. Man. You could shoot this for a week solid. <laughs> Ten more rounds. Got some doubles. All right, my friends, we're back here at the house and uh, hope you enjoyed those two little shooting segments. Now, I did have one issue in the second shooting segment. After the fifth shot, if you'll notice, I kind of hesitated and looked at the revolver. That's because after I'd made the shot and I laid off the trigger, the trigger here stayed back. But then about two seconds later, it came out on its own. So hopefully that's just a break-in issue and not a bad spring issue. I also have the uh, 686 Plus chambered 357 Magnum. Uh, I got a video about it here. Well, two videos about it here on my channel I did three years ago. And uh, I had that issue once, not during that video, but uh, next time I took it out shooting. It only happened one time. The trigger did not come back on its own. And then a couple of seconds later, it came back out. And that's been three years ago and 2,000 rounds ago, and uh, hopefully it's just a break-in issue. Hopefully it's the same with this right here. Another little issue I have with this right here, I noticed where the insignia is, it's kind of discolored under here. But uh, I can get some hops leak, clean that up, put a little Mother's Mag polish on it, and she'll be shining up bright and nice. <laughs> One other thing I did notice, and... A few other owners of this model revolvers had this problem that the barrel was kind of canted over to the side a little bit, in this case to the left. And when I was shooting out there, I noticed it wasn't exactly straight, but I, I was still accurate enough for me. I was hitting the targets. And I got to looking at this, and I don't know if this cell phone camera is going to pick it up or not. If you look at the black right here, yeah, and then look up here at the, uh, the ridge part on top of the barrel. It kind of seems to be off to the left just a shade. Now, you come down this edge of the uh, ridge part, it's about even with that black part right here. But uh, this, this edge over here seems to come past the black part. So uh, what the other owners have had this problem they uh, noticed on the forcing cone that there'd be some lead buildup on one side. 
And uh, when that happened, they sent it back to the factory. Smith & Wesson uh, fixed it and sent it back. And from the videos I've seen here on YouTube, uh, Smith fixed the problems for them. And the turnaround was anywhere from three to five weeks. Now, uh, I will be keeping an eye on that forcing cone for any uh, unusual lead buildup on one side. Anyhow, I'm, other than that, I'm well pleased with this. Uh, it's a beefy, good size revolver. Same size as the 686 uh, K-frame. And yeah, I've shot air pistols that had more vibration or recoil than this thing does. I mean, like I said, you could shoot this all week and not get tired. Anyway, uh, got uh, Silverworks or Steelworks snap caps in here, 10 rounds. I always use steel snap caps when I can. I don't like dry firing revolvers, no matter the brand. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do a trigger check right here. Single action. Yeah. And the trigger sprung right back out. No problem. Let's try some double action. Shout out to my buddy Greg Newton, Line Quest Fitness Channel. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, Greg always enjoys these uh, trigger tests right here on a revolver. <laughs> anyway, uh, Smith & Wesson, model 617-6, 10 rounds, 22LR, 4-inch barrel. Nice rubber uh, grip from the factory. I have no intentions on changing the grip out. Suits me just fine. And uh, as usual, with these Smith & Wesson revolvers, they pretty much end up being generational firearms. I mean, my granddaughter could be shooting it tomorrow, and then maybe 40 years down the road or 50 years, her grandchildren will be shooting this long after I'm gone. These things last. They're made well. And like I said, the little issues I had, I will be keeping an eye on the trigger as far as resetting and the uh, lead buildup on the forcing cone. Hopefully that won't be an issue on this, but got to stay vigilant. All right, my friends, hope to catch y'all soon.